morning, folks. I'm Pastor Kiyomo Butler. This is Restoration Victory Ministries. Hope all is well with you guys this week. Listen, I'm really excited, as always, about this teaching that we're going to have today, man. I truly believe that in this day and in this time that we're living in, like truly in this day and in this present time that we're living in, this is absolutely the most important teaching and concept and understanding that we have to have as Christians. So let us jump right into it, man. Before we get started, let us bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name, thanking you for another opportunity to share together in your word. We pray, Father, that you will lead us and guide us by your spirit into all truth, knowing and understanding that everything that we hear, everything that we learn, everything that we know comes from you. Let it be all of you, Father, and none of me. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, beloved, like I said, let's just jump right into this, man. Excuse me. I am really excited about today's teaching. And today's teaching is mandatory for us as Christians. So let's just get into it, man. Listen, for us as Christians, we have to be solidified on this point that we're going to discuss today. That like there has to be no doubt in our mind. Right? There has to be absolutely not even an inclination of an opportunity for the enemy to come in and sow any seeds of discards in our brains, trying to confuse our brains when we battle with our spirit, we battle with the Holy Spirit of God because we have let all this junk come into our psyche. The Bible says to keep your heart with all diligence for out of your heart flows the issues of your life. The Bible says as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So we have to understand that we have to guard our heart. We have to keep our heart. We have to protect our heart. From anything, the thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. The thief comes but to sow seeds of discord. The thief comes but to cause you to doubt Jesus Christ and to doubt the faith and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in order for us to be solidified, we have to put on our full armor of God. But without this teaching that we're going to have this morning, none of that, the full armor of God, understanding, being sober and being vigilant, understanding the enemy is there. He is our adversary. None of that will be possible without this teaching. And we have to be solidified in this going forward. Now, I will say this real quickly. Understand, beloved, humbly speaking, anybody, anybody can print or publish a paper or a word or a teaching nowadays. You know, we're a technological age. And we're in an age right now when the Me Too movement is not correct to use for this, but we're in an age right now of entitlement. We're in an age right now where everybody wants to have a word or have a say. Everybody wants their opinion or their thoughts to matter. And anybody can print something and put it on the internet. Anybody can make a video for TikTok or a video for YouTube. But just because these people do these things doesn't mean that the things that they're printing are correct. Doesn't mean that the things that they're printing is from God. It doesn't mean that they're ordained by God to speak certain things. And we have to understand that the enemy, the thief, the adversary who walks around like a roaring lion, who comes to kill, steal, and destroy, he has, like, he has real human people that work for him. Like, we have to understand that there are actually people who walk around led by the spirit of the devil, possessed by the spirit of wickedness, possessed by the spirit of the Antichrist, whose job it is to confuse and to deter the body of Christ, to turn the body of Christ away from the, the word of God and the things of Jesus Christ. And he, he will empower people to write stuff. He will empower people to sing songs. He will empower people to say stuff. He will empower people to start false doctrines and false teachings and false theologies and all this junk because that's what he does. His job is to destroy, excuse me, to destroy us. So we have to understand as Christians that for us, we have to be solidified in this point. Let me give you the point because I don't want to get so far caught up that I forget the point. The Bible says in Romans 10 chapter, starting the 13 verse, 13 verse, it says, for who shall ever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It says, but how can you call on him whom you have not believed? How can you believe on him when you have not heard? How can you hear unless it be preached? And how can a man preach unless he be sent? 
For how, few, how beautiful are the feet of him that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. That's 13 through 15. And then verse 17 says, but faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. So 13 through 15 talks about who shall ever call in the name of the Lord shall be saved. 17 says faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. We know Romans 1 and 16, Romans 1 and 16 says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation to them that believe, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein in the gospel of Jesus Christ is the righteousness of God revealed from heaven from faith to faith, for the just shall live by their faith. But 10 and 17 says, faith comes by hearing, hearing comes by the word of God. What am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say Keeping in mind what I said when I first started teaching, talking today about the fact that anybody can print something nowadays. Anybody can put something out there nowadays. Anybody can write a paper, sing a song, print a doctrine, write a book, have it, a thought, do a podcast or anything that they want to do nowadays. And they don't have to be anointed. They don't have to be called. They don't have to be sent by God to preach. They can be sent by the devil to cause dissension. So for us as Christians, beloved, listen, prayerfully I say this, humbly I say this, but genuinely I say this to you. The gospel of Jesus Christ is based upon Jesus and the word of God. Like if it's not from the word of God, this word, we have to as Christians understand that it is not of Jesus Christ the gospel of Jesus. We wouldn't even know anything about Jesus or about God the Father unless it came from someone preaching it to us and learning it them from the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of God. The Bible says all scripture, all scripture, not some scripture, not piece of the scripture, not parts of the scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness, in righteousness <laughs> so that the man of God will be perfect and thoroughly equipped unto every good work. The man or woman of God. So all scripture is given by inspiration of God. But scripture, faith comes by hearing, hearing comes by the word, the scripture. Like our whole foundation as Christians is in the scripture, in the word of God, line upon line. Precept upon precept. Jesus said that every man that's equipped in the word of God, well, not Jesus, but the gospel said, every man that's equipped in the word of God, he brings out things old and new. But whether he brings out things old or new, whether he's preaching from the Old Testament or Old Testament understanding or New Testament, it has to line up with the word, line up on line, precept upon precept. No scripture, as the word says, is of any private interpretation. But holy men in the past spoke as they were inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. So there's no man or no woman on this earth that can come right now and say that they have any private interpretation of scripture or anything that is not in scripture or anything that they say that, praise God, contradicts the scripture. Because if they're doing that, then they are not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ according to the word of God. And beloved, we have to be strong and bold and vigilant in that fact. Not And listen, I know some of the older Christians, some of us who have been Christians for 30, 40, 50 years, you know, doesn't affect us as much. It, it doesn't apply to us as much. But the younger Christians, those who are babes in Christ, those who are searching, for those of us who have kids and grandkids, we have to make sure that they are protected because, see, they're the ones that are dealing with what the enemy is bringing at them because they are the ones in this time that we're living in, this time of illumination, this time of great wisdom, as the world puts the wisdom of the world, this time of learned thinkers and great understanding, uh, this time of science, scientific knowledge, that they are reading, they're seeing people writing stuff, people are, there are churches and there are denominations and there's complete theological understandings that have basis and foundations that are contrary to the word of God. We'll look at something as simple as this month, 
We're celebrating Halloween. Halloween is not a good holiday for a Christian. Like we as Christians should not be out celebrating, playing with the spirit world with demons and ghosts and monsters. And, and we do it and we, we don't pay no attention to it. We think it's cool. But the Bible tells us do not fellowship, do not flirt, do not entertain the Antichrist. Do not entertain things that go against this gospel of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. The fruits of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit, beloved, I will say this. This is not even what I'm teaching on today, but the Holy Spirit needs somebody to hear this. The Holy Spirit will not be out there with you when you're shucking and jiving on Halloween, doing all this junk, and you think that God is with you. God is going to protect his children. His grace and his mercy is there. He's going to protect his children. But, beloved, what if you're in a situation where you're in a situation where a demonic attacker comes and you're there because you want to celebrate Halloween when you shouldn't even be involved? Learn to tell your kids no. Sit your hiney down. Sit your behind down. No. Learn to tell yourself no. That drink or that party or that costume that you've been working out to fit into, none of that. Or, you know, whatever you whatever your reasoning for doing it is not important. It's not important to do things that you know is against the gospel and know against Jesus. If, and if anyone who don't believe me, just do your research. Look up Halloween. Look at the origins of when Halloween started. Look at why it was started, what it meant, why it was the day was the church tried to change the day to make it more of a spiritual day, change the name of it. And then how the world took it back to its original uh, thought pattern. So, because we have to understand that as spiritual beings, the time is coming and the time now is that those who worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. For God seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. When you worship him, you must worship him in spirit and in truth. The devil is a spirit. So when you're going against the devil, you're going against him in a spiritual world. If you give to him in the spirit, then you have no protection in the flesh. That was free. I'm sorry. I'm going to get off that soapbox. Beloved, listen. This teaching is not one that should take all day because as Christians, we should know. But believe it or not, beloved, there are so many of us in the body of Christ. There are so many of us who actually have accepted Jesus as their savior who flirt with doctors of devils. The Bible says, in the latter days, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy. In the latter day, so listen, there's not many times where I, when it, regarding the Bible, I will say that this is that time now. Because, you know, a lot of stuff in the Bible is based upon Jesus coming back and how, where are we in that process and none of us know when God is coming. So you can't specifically say to something that's spoken prophetically, this is that time. I can't even specifically say to the things that God has given me prophetically that this is that time. But I will say that for this particular subject matter that I'm about to speak, it is that time. The Bible says when it was written some thousands and thousands of years ago in the latter days, we are in the latter days where some have departed from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The Bible says, for the time, shall, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, having itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they'll be turned aside unto fables and be turned away from the truth. But you be watchful in all things. Endure affliction. Do the work of, event, of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. You be watchful in all things. You endure affliction. You do the work as a Christian and as an evangelist and as a child of God. You do your work. You do the work of an evangelist. You fulfill your ministry as a Christian. If you're not called to minister, if you're not called in the fivefold ministry, as they call it, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, I say minstrel, anything that you do for God, you work for God. So if you don't figure that you're called as a minister, so that doesn't apply to you. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Because the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrines. The time will come where after they own lust, they will heap up with themselves teachers. They'll be turned aside. And listen to that because we have to hear that scripture. 
It doesn't say that this is not even about the Antichrist or non-believers. He said the time will come where after their own lust, having itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers in the body of Christ. Teachers in the body of Christ. I'm going to say that again. Teachers in the body of Christ. Having, having itching ears after their own lust, they will heap up themselves teachers. They will be turned aside unto fables and be turned away from the truth. These teachers will be teaching doctrines of devils. Some of them, some of the stuff that we hear nowadays is so far away from this word of God. It doesn't make any sense. And people are doing it boldly. And they're calling on the name of Jesus boldly. The only thing that they can do is pray to God, that God knows their heart and that their heart truly has a desire for God, but not according to knowledge, but they have a desire for God. And because of that, God will show them mercy. But for every person that the Bible says the blind leads the blind, all will fall in the ditch. So for every person who has a veil pulled over their eyes and they're blind and they genuinely want to know God, they genuinely want to be a Christian, they genuinely want to love God, and they think they're doing right because some teacher has taught them wrong. They can pray for the grace of God to forgive them and to allow them acknowledgement unto the truth, to open their spiritual eyes. And there are some that are like that. So not everyone is just the devil, but then there are some who actually are teaching wrong for the wrong reasons. And those, beloved, and unfortunately, we as people, we like shiny stuff. If you look at the internet right now, YouTube, people that have the most likes are the people that people click on and watch because it's entertaining. It's shiny. It's like a new car or a new toy or a new house or a new job. It's, you know, it, it, it pumps up your fleshly desires, you know, what you like to hear in your ears, what you like to see with your eyes. It makes you feel good. It's entertaining. But not every person that's doing that is doing it for the right reasons. Some of them are doing it just for the money, just for the popularity, just for the fame. They could care less about the gospel of Jesus Christ. They genuinely have no desire for the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that is why we as Christians have to understand that for, I, I wish I could <laughs> start a website that says www.missme.com and that website would be totally dedicated to if you're talking anything to me that does not line up with this Bible line up on line, precept upon precept now we know that the Bible says that God is not the author of confusion but of peace so God will not God cannot lie God is not a son of man that he should lie nor God is not a man that he should lie nor a son of man that he should have to repent if God has spoken it, it shall come to pass. If God has said it, it shall be. So God's word does not lie. All scripture that was given by inspiration from God is God's word. I am the Lord, I change not. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. This word cannot be changed. In the book of Revelation, at the very last chapter of the book of Revelation, it tells you what happens to people who change this word who changed the books of prophecy. This whole Bible is a book of prophecy. Things that have been prophesied, things that have come to pass that have been prophesied, and things that have been prophesied is going to happen in the future. So if you have decided, God does not need your help, my help, no one. I'll say this in close. This is serious. God, and, and we as humans, because we all want to be counted, we all want our opinion to matter, we have one of the things that is hardest for us as humans to really fathom and hear that your opinion don't always matter. Like sometimes nobody cares what you think because sometimes if what you think is wrong and you're pushing that wrong, nobody cares. So I will say to us as humans, bruh, listen, it's the gospel of Jesus Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ only. But that faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ, that faith in God the Father, that faith in the Holy Spirit comes through the word. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of God. The just shall live by their faith. Their faith in what? Hearing. Hearing what? The word of God. And we as Christians have to be sober. We have to be vigilant. We have to be. If there is one time I can guarantee you 
God will not mind you being just a little bit rude. Just a little bit rude, a little bit rambunctious. Uh, even a little bit disrespectful is when you stand for who you are. Anything and anyone that comes to you, contrary to this gospel of Jesus Christ, let them be a curse. Anyone trying to force it on you, put them in check. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. Miss me. Brother, sister, God bless you, but nah, I'm not interested. You know, whatever your, whatever way you choose to use the king's language, if you're very proper and, etic and your etiquette is great and you want to speak politely, you're a little more street, you're a little more edgy, you're a little more urban, you got a country twain, whatever it is and however it is you want to say it, the result, people have to know that you stand for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You have to know that you stand for the gospel of Jesus Christ according to the word of God. Line upon line, precept upon precept, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Because as a Christian, our faith comes by hearing and our hearing comes by the word of God. Line upon line, precept upon precept. And if anyone comes to challenge or change or mismangle or twist or try to confuse you, man, tell them, listen, I, I, like Paul said, I curse you. You, man, listen, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I'm good. You give them, hey, man, now nah, I miss you with that. I'm all right. Thank you. God bless you. They come again, hey man, look, I rebuke you. I curse you in the name of Jesus. Because, praise God, Paul did it. Paul said, if we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you, let them be accursed. He said, I said before and I'll say it again to you now. If any man preach any other gospel, let him be accursed. Paul was saying, look, y'all miss me with that. Any one of y'all jokers try to come to me with anything but Jesus Christ and the gospel thereof, I don't want to hear that. Y'all go, go jump in the water. Go do something. Just get away from me. God bless you. www.missme.com I just, buy. I just don't have no interest in it. Jesus, he gave us the perfect example. That's why the Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God. That's why it says, listen and read this Bible, line upon line, precept upon precept. Psalms 119, line upon line, precept upon precept, because we have to understand that when we don't Honor the gospel of Jesus Christ according to the word, line upon line and precept upon precept. When we don't study to show ourselves approved, when we don't know, when we don't understand, the devil will do to us just like he tried to do to Jesus, which he couldn't do because Jesus knew the word. He, The devil used the word, but he didn't use it line upon line and precept upon precept. He started trying to bring up other analogies of the word, other understandings of the word, other doctrines, trying to confuse Jesus and Jesus rebuked him. He said, get away from me, Satan. You're in offense to me. I ain't got time to talk to you no more. Bye. Oh, peace out. I'm going to holler at you, Satan. Adam didn't do that. Adam listened to Satan. God told Adam, hey, bro, don't touch that tree. Don't eat that tree. If you even, I, I can hear God saying, if you even go near that tree, if you can smell that tree, we got problems. But what Satan said, did God really say that? That's not really what God meant in his word. That's not what God's word really meant. What God meant was, well, you know what, bro? Listen, God, they, they saying that to you. Praise God. They, 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 that, uh, that Christian religion, they saying that to you. They doing it because they don't want you to know the truth. This is the truth. What? And at that point, when you allow yourself, when you allow your lust of the flesh, when you allow your itching ears to uh, allow you just to stray just a little bit, therein comes the problem. Now, as I close, I will say this. Listen. I'm not talking about books and historical books that preach upon that time and that place and the culture that verify this gospel. That's not what I'm talking about. You know, like a lot of us, a lot of ministers, a lot of us in the body of Christ have learned Hebrew or they're taking Hebrew or they're learning the Greek and they're studying because they want to understand the meaning of words. It's like when I talk to you when Jesus said, Peace I give unto you, my own peace do I leave unto you. Perfect example on our close. Peace I live, give unto you, my own peace do I leave unto you. Not as the world gives do I give. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That's John 15. Well, peace, the word peace, in our understanding, we just think peace, you know, have peace. Well, in the Hebrew and in the Greek, that word peace, in the Hebrew, that word shalom, 
which is the original word, has such a great and vast meaning. So when you learn the Hebrew, you learn that there's so much more to, in America, a lot of times the words that we read, they have like one or two meanings, or they have one or two meanings that we learn, one or two impactful meanings that we kind of take for the rest of our life, and that's what it means to us. Where in the Hebrew, that word peace gives an understanding, it gives an ideology of what you have from God, what you have through Jesus Christ, like complete and total inner peace, outer peace, complete serenity, freedom from all agitation, worry, stress, problems. Nothing is missing and nothing is broken in your life. But that doesn't contradict the word. As a matter of fact, that gives more power to the word. So in situations like that, then reading other books, historical books, learning the Greek, learning the Hebrew, that's a blessing. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those that, especially in today's time, who have made it their point to preach and say things according to their flesh, according to their humanistic desires, according to what they want to hear and or think that makes sense to them, according to things that allow them to say that they're a Christian, say that they love Jesus, but do it their own way. Just in their flesh, do it their own way. Praise God. Genuinely, I'm closing after this. Think about this, this thought, until we speak again. All sin is sin. But who do you think God is more lenient towards? Or who do you think God is going to show more mercy? Listen to this. This is, a, you know, these are like the things that make you say, hmm. A man that's a sinner, that knows he's a sinner, knows he's living contrary to the word of God in certain areas. He's living, trying to be right. He's losing the battle to the enemy, but he knows. He's not out there teaching wrong. He knows what he's doing is wrong. He's dealing with that him and God, but he's not challenging the word. He's just saying, God, I'm a fornicator. I'm a fornicator. I'm a sinner. I'm a liar. That's just me, and I am trying, God, but I'm not trying to teach other people that a little fornication and a little lying is good. I'm just saying that this is me and this is my sin. This is where I fall short and I'm working out my own salvation with God. You got that person. Then you got another person who's a fornicator or a liar or anything else, or living in homosexuality or anything else that's going on that they have decided now that they're going to live this way. This way is good. That ain't really what, what God said. Don't do it in the Bible. That's not really what he meant. What God meant, what God has said was, so now they're taking the Bible and they're twisting the Bible to fit their own flesh and their own lust. And then they're living away and they're teaching people that living this way is right. Because after all, they're Christians. They love God. They just decided to do it they want, the way they want to do it. They didn't like the King James Version. They don't like the new King James Version. That's too real. They like the Okinawa off the tree, off the wall, out the sky version. They like the H-I-J-K Elemental P Version. They like the version that has been rewritten and rewritten and rewritten. And every time it's written, it's made softer and softer and softer. They, they like this version. This version is good for them. That old school version, I don't like that. I can't deal with that. Praise God. Be careful about, because like I said, everyone can write and everyone can print and everyone can say they're an authority. Be careful about all these different versions and different authorities and different doctrines and different theologies, and different words that don't line up with the word of God. The original word of God. Like the original text. The text that everything, regardless of what text you're reading now, what version you, you have, it all starts with the original version. I, the King James Version for me, the New King James Version for me, the Amplified Version for me. Everything really starts with the King James. And then everything that's interpreted for different groups of people for different genres of people, for people to understand different, understand better. Listen, and this is not against any version of the Bible because I love the Bible and I love the Bible in any form. I'm just saying be careful about versions of the Bible that have changed the meaning of the Bible so much that what you're reading now does not line up with the original version, line up online and precept upon precept. And the only way that you're going to truly know that is you have to go into it asking the Holy Spirit of God to give you true elimination, illumination of his word. His will. Because the devil will use the word to destroy you. He tried it, he did it with Adam. He tried to do it with Jesus. We're no different. He did it with Adam, and he did it with the second Adam, Jesus. 
Do you think now that he's not going to do it to us? Like, we're mute from it? Like, the, when the Bible says the things that it says about the latter days and doctrines of devils and twisting up and changing the word, was that just like a something that they put in there to fill up space? Or was that a message for us to understand where we are in this day and time? Especially with everything that's going on in the world. We have to be sober. We have to be vigilant. We have to be wise. We have to honor God the Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit of God, the angels of God that have been sent to help us on this earth. And we have to do it according to this word. Some of us are so wise and some of us have such great brains that sometimes our brain gets in the way of us living spiritually according to the word of God. When it comes to the word of God, you got to shut your brain off. You have to allow the Holy Spirit of God to lead you and to equip your brain. Your brain can't be, your flesh can't be in control when you're trying to use your flesh, your humanism, your earthly desires to influence or train the spirit. That's not how it works. The brain doesn't train the spirit. It's the spirit realm first that trains the brain. That's for somebody. It's the spirit realm first that trains the brain. You and your education can't train God and can't train the Holy Spirit of God. It's your spirit that trains your brain. Listen, beloved, God bless you. I hope everyone has a great, great, great day today, man. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Until we meet again, God bless you in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.